for just a minute. Pankaj sir, Dibya ma'am is about to join, then I am going to start. Yes, uh, see you, sir. So with your due permission, I am starting, sir. A very good morning to one and all. I, Narend Garg, take this opportunity to accord a warm and cordial welcome to you all to celebrate National Science Day organized by Science Club of Amity University, Madhya Pradesh, and MIT School of Engineering and Technology. The good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. National Science Day is celebrated in India on 28th February each year to mark the discovery of the Raman effect by Indian physicist Sir C.V. Raman on 28th February 1928. For his discovery, Sir C.V. Raman was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1930. So National Science Day is celebrated to spread a message about the importance of science and technology used in our daily lives. Today, we are fortunate to have, have with us Dr. Pankaj Misra, Professor, Department of Physics, Ms. Dibya Gautam, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronic, uh, CS, uh, Computer Science and Engineering, Dr. Sivan Singh, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, MIT School of Engineering Technology. Uh, uh, now, I request Ms. Divya Gautam, Madam, to please give your opening remarks on uh, science, technology, and innovations. Please, ma'am. Thank you, sir. I think I'm audible. Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Yeah. So, good morning to all. Today, all of, all of us are gathered here to celebrate the discovery of great Indian uh, physicist, Sir C. V. Raman. On this day in 1928, he invented the Raman effect. By celebrating this day as National Science Day, we show our dignity and respect to the famous Indian physicist for his contribution to the field of science. Raman effect explains the effect on the scattering of light. Yeah, when you are not audible. Different materials. I'm not audible. Yeah, you are not still. audible. Hello. And now, ma'am, you are audible. You are audible, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, you are audible now. Audible now? Hello? Yes, ma'am, audible. Okay. So, uh, good morning to all of you. Today, all of us are gathered here to celebrate I the discovery of. I think there is a technical problem with the madam. Still, I'm not audible, sir. Ma'am, you are audible now. Hello. Ma'am, you are audible. Yeah, thank you. Shall I start? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, madam, please yes, start. Yes, ma'am, please do. Yeah. Yes, so, good yes. morning to all of you, all the guests and students. Today, uh, all of us are gathered here to celebrate the discovery of the India, great Indian physicist, sir, C. V. Raman. On this day, 1928, he invented the Raman effect. By celebrating this day as National Science Day, we show our dignity and respect to the famous Indian physicist for his contribution to the field of science. Raman effect explains the effect on the scattering of light when passing through different materials. Most of us are physics students, so they all are aware with this effect. So every year on uh, February 28, we celebrate this day to mark the invention of Raman effect. However, uh, do you know uh, what is and why the government has uh, de dedicated a day? Raman effect, also known as Raman scattering, was an important discovery in the field of scattering of light. So National Science Day promotes science and technology and its feasibility in our daily life. It also encourages scientists, writers, students, and others who are involved in the promotion of science and technology. The day must be observed with the same diligence every year. It should not be limited only to the science fraternity, but also must have participants from various walks of life. 
So today on the occasion of National Science Day, I would like to invite Dr. Shivendra Singh to deliver his valuable words for enlightening us. Over to you, Shivendra, sir. Thank you, ma'am. My screen is visual, ma'am. Hello. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
so that was very brief history i have discussed why it is celebrated and little history about cv raman now we are going to discuss the different objectives so what are the objectives of this national science day so basically we have four major objectives the first one is like we have to spread a positive message uh, in the society towards the usefulness of science for our common people so that is the first motive we have we also want to display all the activities we have to make a lot of effort a lot of achievements so in the field of science and technology uh, we are doing on on this day the third one objective is to make an opportunity to science minded people so that if it is a student like if it is a younger people or if it is older people so they can interact with each other they can make some knowledge sharing and they can come together on a platform so that we can contribute something significant to the society to the mankind and ultimately to the our country so that is the third objective and the last one was to encourage the people of india people across the globe to popularize the science and technology so that we can make a better world so these are the four different objectives of celebrating this national science day and now i'm coming to uh, the next crucial part like when it is started you know when the uh, celebration of science day started in india so every year we have different theme the science and technology has given different theme for different year here i am only showing four different years like in 2019 the theme was science for the people and people for the science also this was the theme of celebration in 2020 it was women in science in 2021 it was future of sti impact on educational skills and work and in this year 2022 the theme of this national science day is integrated approach in science and technology for sustainable future so that's why very crucial because uh, now we adays we are very much aware about greenhouse global warming different phenomena which is happening across the world so in order to maintain a proper environment in order to make a clean and uh, green country we have to follow this sustainable future we have to develop a lot of technology which are environment friendly Uh, our activity our technology should not harm to the environment so this kind of you know motive is there behind celebration of national science day 2020 so if you want to read more about these uh, themes then you can go to these links after the class i will share this ppt to student they can go to this you know uh, link and they can read more about this one why this uh, actually teams had been selected what are the outcome what are the major purpose behind choosing any theme so there are you know a very broad topic there so i'm not going to discuss all those themes i'm going to discuss what is called raman effect and why it is crucial and what are the different applications of raman effect so these are the three questions which actually i am going to cover in my talk i believe i am audible clear and loud sir yes seven sir you are audible okay so i just want to know from students like uh, uh, they must you know heard the name like cv raman raman effect so i want to know from students what exactly do they know about raman effect first question what is called raman effect so anyone want to answer this one please unmute and answer this question what is called raman effect student side anyone I don't know they are even listening or not. So Nupur Tiwari, are you there, Nupur? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, what is called Raman effect? Do you have any idea? Issue Kuzwa want to answer. Okay, Issue, go ahead. Sir, um, it is a kind of a process of scattering of light particles. Okay. so any scattering because the scattering is very common process so if any scattering we can say it is raman effect or not there should be some guideline right because what is the difference between scattering and raman effect so the answer is not you know up to that one so who want to answer next like uh, raj singh rajawat can you hear me raj yes sir yeah what is called raman effect because uh, already we, you are familiar with this one right do you know the answer yes or no no sir i don't okay roli tiwari 
I just want to know, like, what actually you guys, you know, know about this Raman effect? Because he is a great physicist. Uh, we are dealing with this physics, this phenomena, uh, from, you know, class eight, nine, and we don't know about this Raman effect. So actually, the thing is, whenever anyone get, you know, this Nobel Prize, there must be some some breakthrough research, something very interesting, something very novel there. Uh, only because of those applicability, those uh, you know, thought process, they got this Nobel Prize. So we have to understand this one. Okay, so I'm going to discuss these three one by one. So let's start with the Raman effect. What is called Raman effect and why actually it is important? Why he got the Nobel? So let's begin with very basic part of physics, which is called scattering. So anyone, you know, I'll, I mean, everybody knows this is scattering, so I don't want to ask now. So we know that whenever light rays get deviated from its straight path on striking to any obstacle like small particle, like dust particle, vapor particle. So this simple process is called scattering, right? 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 Can anyone answer? Yes. You know the scattering, right? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. okay, now this scattering has two types. Either it can be elastic scattering or inelastic scattering. We know the simple concept of physics, like whenever this is elastic process, it means there is no change in energy. So if the energy is conserved, energy is maintained, then that is called elastic. In the case of inelastic scattering, the energy change takes place. So that's what's interesting. So when we say scattering, we have to mention this process Actually, C.V. Raman worked on inelastic scattering. It was not elastic scattering. There were famous scientists, famous British scientists. He, he is called Rayleigh. He worked on that, you know, elastic scattering process. So in the case of inelastic processing process, some energy is either gained by the molecule or it is lost by the molecule. That is called inelastic scattering. Now the crucial part which Raman has invented is that this inelastic scattering is very, very weak. Out of 10 power 7 photon, only one photon show this kind of inelastic weak scattering. That is crucial. That is something breakthrough. And that's why he, you know, on the basis of his, you know, uh, perfect observation, he made this one photon and he discovered this phenomena in 1928 and then he got Nobel Prize in 1930. That is the crucial part. And if you are interested with this, you know, what is called this inelastic scattering and how we can actually represent this inelastic scattering, then just I want to show with one simple animation. So suppose, suppose this is our particle, some particle is here, some small particle is here. And we are irradiating this particle with frequency nu naught. So this is the frequency of light. We know that this equation is equal to h nu. So energy is directly proportional to frequency. So we are irradiating some frequency on this particular molecule. Now, once it is strikes on this molecule, it goes away. Means it is supposed to scattered. Now the frequency is nu dash. So if this incoming radiation and it, if this scattered radiation, they have different frequency, only then we can say this is actually inelastic scattering. And that's what is called Raman effect. This is the very, very, very brief outline of Raman effect. Picture is clear or not? Tell me first. Yes, sir. So now you can find the difference. The scattering, why it is different? It is not actually normal scattering. It is inelastic scattering. Oh, yes, sir, inelastic it, uh, scattering. Yes, so it should be clear. Like whenever you are, you know, writing something about Raman effect or why this Raman got Nobel Prize. So at if you are, you know, able to mention these point at least, this point you can mention, it means you can, you know, justify this Raman effect phenomena. Although it is very, very broad. There are a lot of postulates, there are a lot of concepts. But in outline, if you are able to write or you speak these things, you can explain Raman effect up to a certain extent. Now you can have, you know, some question like why this inelastic scattering takes place and why this elastic scattering takes place. What are the concepts behind this elastic and elastic, uh, inelastic, you know, uh, collision, uh, sorry, scattering. So to understand this concept, first we have to go to our last year class. Last year, spectroscopy class, and that was IR spectroscopy. It was there in your syllabus, right? Infrared spectroscopy, right? It was there, right? 
yes sir okay so now vivek pal will tell what is called infrared spectroscopy vivek what is called infrared and what is the application of infrared vivek pal right now no idea sir okay but it was there in your syllabus last semester only so soham upadhyay will tell soham the reason i'm asking you because you know in order to understand raman spectroscopy properly you must have some idea about this infrared spectroscopy because they are somehow interconnected inter connected interrelated so okay so if anyone has a little bit idea about ground state and excited state so they they must have some idea right ground state means they have lesser energy they are little stable as compared to excited state so i have three picture one suppose our molecule is there in the ground state so this is the ground state this is the first electronic state if you know the concept of uv visible spectroscopy then you must be knowing that in molecules there are electronic energy level e0 represent the ground electronic state e1 represent the first electronic state e2 e3 e4 and so on right right yes sir right so suppose some molecule is present in the e0 ground state and we have given some energy some frequency nu naught and this molecule has absorbed the energy and it goes to excited state so these are the virtual excited state so what can happen is that in excited state molecule do not exist for the longer period of time so it will come back and it will liberate energy with this simple diagram we can easily understand like this frequency is higher as compared to this one means these two are not equal so whenever this situation arises we say it in elastic collision right right because molecule has absorbed some sort of energy only then this emission has lesser energy as compared to absorption so whenever this situation arises in molecule we say these are the stokes like in the second case if we have exactly same amount of energy which is absorbed and which is emitted by the molecule it is called elastic perfect elastic collision which is called relay scattering in physics the third case may also arise the third case is like we have some molecule that can present in higher electronic state and they can absorb energy goes to high state and they can liberate energy but here the thing is the emitting frequency is higher as compared to absorbed frequency again these two are not equal it means it is also a case of in elastic collision and it will gives rise to anti stokes line now the crucial point what is called raman effect what is called raman spectroscopy so raman has discovered these two lines is stokes and anti stokes line this is already invented by relays the british scientist so these two phenomena are called actually raman spectroscopy raman effect so with the help of this simple exam you can understand this one like suppose we are irradiating one molecule one molecule with 19436 cm inverse wavelength of light we are irradiating this one on a compound having carbonyl group so most of you are familiar like carbonyl group absorb at 1650 cm inverse so if we irradiate this compound on this light then there can be two process one this energy can be absorbed so we are subtracting this energy so we will have this value second is this energy 1650 can be added to this one so we can have this anti stokes lines so on the base of these two simple phenomena absorption and emission like here the molecule has absorbed here the molecule has added to incoming light so we are getting anti stokes line so on the base of this simple phenomena we are getting this kind of stokes and anti stokes line am i clear am i clear yes sir see if anyone has yes, little bit idea about infrared spectroscopy then he or she can easily understand but if you don't know what is called this centimeter inverse what is called ir spectroscopy then it will be difficult for you guys because that is very very uh, you know general concept ir spectroscopy that's why there in your you know btech first uh, semester syllabus because it is there in your physics in chemistry in material science in nano science uh, there are a variety of applications of these techniques will be there okay so that's what i have discussed so now 
we will discuss a lot of finding because i am not going to discuss the quantum uh, approach and all those things so what are the different findings for different findings are like whenever we are irradiating any molecule any monochromatic light particularly then the light can be scattered experiment shows the intensity of this scatter light is inversely proportional to fourth power of wavelength so that is a question which is generally asked in competitive examination this is very important question and then we have discussed this is relay scattering we have discussed some weak additional line stokes and anti stokes line which is ultimately called raman effect and this raman lines this raman lines are actually independent of the wavelength of incident light so these are the four five major finding which has been you know achieved by cv raman and that's what uh, you know he has invented so apart from that there is some you know diagram i have shown so that you can easily understand the content since at the end of the you know uh, lecture i will share this ppt to you guys so that you can read this you know quantum approach why and how these kind of strokes and anti strokes line are, are there in you know raman uh, raman spectroscopic technique here you can find this technique like absorption and emission these two are equal so it will represent relay here you can say the molecule a is absorbing light and you see once it is coming back means after the excited state when it's coming to the ground state it has different frequency so it is a kind of inelastic collision and since the energy of you know emitted light or frequency of emitted light is less so we say it is stokes here you say if the molecule is there in the excited state already it is present in the excited state and it is coming to ground state so here this emitted light has more frequency as compared to absorbed line it means the frequency is somehow added that's why it is called anti stokes lines so this is the very simple pictorial diagram and with the help of this picture you can understand why this stokes anti stokes and relay scattering do exist in molecule based upon these energy levels all right all right yes sir okay okay fine so i already have discussed these three cases so i am not going to discuss this one this is actually written so that you can read it and you can understand it already i have explained i am not going to discuss this one relay scattering we know the meaning of relay scattering it is because of elastic collision we know what is yes, called sir. elastic inelastic so everything i have discussed now we are coming to second part like why this stokes line are higher intensity than anti stokes line this is also important question like already i have mentioned if you see this diagram see this one yeah this diagram whenever you see any raman spectra so you see the intensity of anti stokes is least this is higher you see the intensity is higher right intensity of this one is very very high actually it goes something somewhere here so it has very high intensity because most of the light are you know showing this relay scattering means elastic scattering uh, two which is showing inelastic one is stokes one is anti stokes so the intensity of this anti stokes is least this is the least intense so i am going to discuss this one why it is actually least intense so it is because of you know the molecules which exist in the ground and excited state so whenever we see like suppose we have some vibrational energy level so this is called vibrational energy level and v is equal to 0 means this is the ground vibrational level this is the first excited vibrational level this is the second excited this is the third excited this is the fourth excited so you see whenever we are moving from this ground to higher energy state the number of molecules which is present on those energy states are keep on decreasing right 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 yes sir maximum at zero yes, so if suppose here we have 100 molecules and here suppose we have at the fourth level we have suppose two molecules so whenever we strike the light whenever we inside inside we collide some light then the possibility high possibility is that this molecule will absorb energy and they will go to high state so that's why they are generally shown by stokes line anti stokes are because of this higher energy transition and because of this 
energy state the number of molecules are less as compared to ground state so that's why less number of transition will be there intensity will be lesser so that's what means clear clear yes sir okay so now the third question is why actually this raman effect was crucial now this is actually very very interesting point and very important as well this is extremely important if you really want to understand the contribution of cv raman then you have to aware you should be knowing about this concept this is extremely critical because already i mentioned like if you know ir spectroscopy you can easily understand this raman spectroscopy because if the molecule is centrosymmetric if it has symmetry in the center like co2 molecule we know co2 molecule we have center of symmetry c double bond o so this is center of symmetry molecule so in the case of centrosymmetric molecule generally this symmetrical stretching it is not detected by ir spectroscopy so if any molecule has centric centrosymmetric symmetry that molecule cannot be studied with the help of infrared spectroscopy that molecule can be easily studied with the help of raman spectroscopy that is something interesting very 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 interesting so that's why it was you know very critical is it clear Yes, sir. This, point, this point is very critical. So whenever any molecule have some symmetric, centrosymmetric structure, and they have some symmetrical stretching and symmetrical bending, not bending, symmetrical stretching actually. So that symmetrical stretching can never be detected with the help of IR spectroscopy because in the case of centrosymmetric stretching, the net dipole moment change is zero. So we cannot detect that molecule. But whenever it is deal with raman spectroscopy that can be easily you know studied it will show uh, you know a light it will show spectra on the raman spectroscopy so that's interesting so there is a rule which is called rule of mutual exclusion this is also a very important rule and this rule says whenever there is a center of symmetry in molecule then if molecule is ir active molecule will be raman inactive if molecule is raman active molecule will be ir inactive so this is called rule of mutual exclusion principle so that's what you know something critical and now why this is actually very crucial and very useful for scientists across globe that i can easily you know uh, so with the help of this slide like whenever i am saying this raman this is shown by this green uh, sorry red color then this is shown by infrared here in this purple color so why this raman is you know unique why this raman is advantageous as compared to infra or even other spectroscopic technique why it is critical so the first thing we know is like raman is because of the scattering of light and there is vibrational energy level in which transition takes place that is the first thing but in the case of ir spectroscopy we know it is because of the absorption of light this is not scattering scattering is there in raman but in ir it is the absorption phenomena which is taking place in the molecule that is the first difference second the molecule need not to possess any permanent dipole moment in order to be raman active molecule can have it cannot have dipole moment it will be detected it can be detected their properties can be studied but if a molecule do not have dipole moment it cannot be studied with the help of ir spectroscopy that is the advantage in raman we can use water as a solvent because water has centrosymmetric molecule already i have mentioned this is a centrosymmetric molecule h2o so this can be detected it will show the absorption spectra but whenever we are using water in the case of ir spectroscopy since this bond is polar this bond has dipole moment oxygen is more electronegative as compared to hydrogen so it has partial negative charge it has partial positive charge this bond has ionic character so this bond will be there the peak will be there so we cannot use water as a solvent in the case of ir spectroscopy now the fourth point is sample preparation is not very elaborate means we can prepare sample in solid liquid gas or any state like uh, super state or any state we can make it meta state but in the case of ir spectroscopy it is necessary to make sample is solid in and liquid state right? generally gaseous samples are not used in the case of ir spectroscopy in the case of raman it gives an indication of covalent character important point this gives covalent character but this 
IRS spectroscopy gives ionic character, the information of ionic character because dipole moment part must be there. It should be there in a molecule. It means the molecule is ionic. If ionic is there, that can be detected with the help of IR. The last is actually, it is a little bit uh, contrary because the cost of instrumentation for Raman is higher as compared to IR spectroscopy. Okay. Okay. So this is it. I have made the summary. Uh, we have discussed a lot of stuff about National Science Day, uh, the history, the objective, the what is called Raman effect, why Raman is crucial, and what are the comparisons. Thank you all. So if you have any question, please, you can ask me. Students, if you have any question, you can ask. You can raise your hands. Okay, students, if you don't have any queries, uh, you can uh, mail your queries also to the sir. He'll be happy to answer your queries later on. So thank you, Dr. Suven, uh, Suven sir, for giving such a wonderful talk. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You have uh, enriched our knowledge about importance of science. <coughs> National Science Day celebration, its objective, different themes used every year, and most importantly about Sir C. V. Raman and his discovery. All the students definitely will be de benefited from your session. So once again, thank you, sir. I will share the PPT, sir. You can share with the students. Yeah, yes, yeah, definitely, sir. We will share that with the students. Sure. So now I would like to invite Dr. Pankaj Mishra, sir, coordinator, Science Club, for his concluding remarks. Please, sir. Thank you very much, sir. In this National Science Day program, we try to conclude the particular part, the basic theory that is done by the different scientists, especially the work done by Dr. C.V. Raman. And Dr. Shivendra explained in a beautiful way that is the hands on type of program. So the students may know about the practical life. So science directly related with the real life. As we know, necessity is the mother of invention. So we always try to take such type of example in our life. So student, you can take the example of Dr. Shivan. He's a young scientist who worked in the CSIR lab, PhD from IIT Indore, PDF from ISR Mohali, and in the area of research, he is doing wonders. So such type of personality is there as a mentor is there. So you may just work out with the help of the faculty and you can done in a well manner. If you will take the example of Mr. Narendra Kumar Gar, Mr. Narendra Gar is scoring 297 marks out of 300 in physics, and that is a PET. So even the topper of PET was not having the marks in physics in the 297. So this is the marvelous wonders such type of there. Next example is Ms. Divya Gautam. Ms. Divya is Gautam is not PhD awarded, but yet he's published patent working in the area of IT and CSE in the networking. And she just tried to publish the paper with the students. So such type of faculty is there. The young innovative faculty who is working in the area and we just try to give for us. So student, I hope all will benefit and we always welcome you in the science club and the activity. If any issue is there, always welcome. Thank you, Naren, sir. Uh, thank you, Pankaj, sir. Now uh, I would like to invite Ms. Dibya Gautam, madam, for her uh, vote of thanks. Please, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Pankaj Mishra, sir. Thank you, Naren, sir, uh, for giving me this opportunity. So uh, I would like to begin with the theme of National Science Day 2022. Every year the theme has changed. So this year the theme is integrated approach in science and technology for sustainable future, which means combining science and technology together to make life better and easier. So we as technocrats should understand science and then have to come forward for implementing it with the technology. These, these are our major roles. So with this note, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I, Divya Gautam, Assistant Professor, De Department of Computer Science and Engineering, would like to privilege for, would like to take privilege for presenting no vote of thanks on behalf of Science Club AUMP. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Shivendra for his excellent talk. And I'm sure that all the participants will definitely benefit from the deliberation made by you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Pankaj Mishra, sir, and uh, Mr. Narendra Garg, sir, 
for sparing your valuable time with us in spite of busy schedules and conducting this session for, to benefit students. Once again, thank you, Dr. Singh, sir, for being with us. You have thrown a light on Raman effect for which Science Day has been celebrated. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all the participants for their enthusiastic participation. So with this, we come to the end of the session. Thank you everyone for being with us. Have a healthy and beautiful day. Thank you, sir. Over to you, Narin, sir. Thank, you, thank you, session. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. Thank you, all the students, for the patience listening. And uh, uh, lastly, thank you, Subhan, sir, for preparing such a wonderful presentation for our students. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.